Hello, everyone. Welcome to Miami Beach Urban Studios Live Art Talk with South Florida artist Jen Clay. I'm Colette Mello, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'd like to give a very special thank you to the City of Miami Beach Department of Tourism and Office of Cultural Affairs for their continued support for FIU Miami Beach Urban Studios. Jen Clay is a multimedia artist that works in fiber, climation, performance, paper, and immersive installations. Her elaborate installations and performances feature organic forms which speak to the audience through audio and sewn messages to make fear, anxiety, and uncertainty approachable. Her work is informed by science fiction, mental health, and otherness. Jen Clay has created performances for the institutions, including Girls Club Collection, ICA Miami, and the Norton Museum of Art. Recent projects include Welcome to Me and You, a large site-specific installation at Young Art at, my, at Art Museum, Davie, Florida. She has also been exhibited at the Hollywood and Arts Cultural Center numerous times, and she was awarded the 2019 South Florida Cultural Consortium Fellowship for her wearable works. Jen won the 2020 Regional Grammy through South Florida PBS for Jen Clay, The Texture of Anxiety. Jen Clay earned her BFA in sculpture from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and an MFA in sculpture from the University of Florida with a minor in applied behavioral analysis and costume design. Jen is currently an artist in residence at Ulites Arts in Miami, South Beach. Thank you, Jen, for joining us today. I'm handing the screen over to you now. Okay, yay. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course. Hi, Can you everybody. just tell us where you are right now? Um, so I'm at the Ulite Studios. I'm on the second floor. Um, I am the person wearing glasses and I have dark hair. Um, I have a face. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, if there, there's also an open studio on Wednesday if anyone wants to come visit me. Um, yeah, that's where I am. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, excuse me. First off, it is a real honor to be here. And Thank secondly, you. Mind if I take a picture of this meeting? Oh yeah, you can you can take pictures throughout. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So Thank you, Jen. And thank everyone for joining us. Oops, hold on. Let me, I think, hold on. We're having a little bit of problem here with your audio. Let me see what happened. Oh, I got muted. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think, I think, um, let me go to the beginning. Ooh. I've had, too, I, I, when I'm given too much power, sometimes I mess up. So um, my name's Jen Clay, and I create essentially doomsday creatures I have for a while. And um, that's what I refer to the creatures in my work. Um, I, I've made them since uh, 2008. Uh, I've made them in a lot of different kinds of ways. Uh, usually modular because I'm the type of friend to not ask a lot of people to help me move things. Um, and it began as, as a secret. This was work that I was making um, in undergrad that was separate from um, my in-class assignments. And this was work that I just enjoyed making. And this is where my practice has stemmed from. So these were essentially monsters, um, more ambiguous creatures called the woolly people um, that I would leave around uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, which is actually, I went to school in UNC Charlotte, not UNC Chapel Hill, common mistake. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, I apologize for that. Oh, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry at all. Um, 
So I began making public sculpture that um, I would set and place in different spaces. And then I began um, using um, uh, solar lights, silicone, welding them. And then I realized like I really wanted to make kinetic sculpture and that it was more affordable to um, actually just get in the work and move it myself. Um, and so a lot of these creatures that I make are a part of um, different installations and video work. And most of the time I create them to speak directly to you um, because I want people to have a first person experience with otherness, um, kind of like uh, first contact. And I really want people to have a good experience. Um, I make work um, for people to like for people who may have never been in a museum before. Um, I want I think of my work as an entryway into the art world. Um, maybe for people who also don't feel comfortable in a museum. And so this is the void, and um, it through performances it tries to talk you into becoming friends with it, and it's really just like a manifestation of like depression or anxiety. So think of that as like it's embodied outside of you, talking to you, trying to take over your life. And these are other um, ambiguous forms that I've created. Um, these are costumes and these are also like, I refer to them as wearables. This work um, is called Soft Sanity, and it was created in 2019 um, for the Norton Museum of Art. And I include um, a lot of different kinds of claymation, and um, it was set up much like a petting zoo. And so I just wanted to like show you really quickly like all the different forms um, that I, I make a lot of my friends who are non art makers refer to me as a monster maker. And um, the work that I'm making right now, um, since the pandemic are is wall work, which may from an outsider seem very different from the costumes and the public sculpture. But to me, all of these are interchangeable. Um, I'm just trying to make an ambiguous form that you read as a body, but as non-human. And so I'm really inspired by um, creature features. Uh, my favorite movie is The Blob. I don't know if anyone's seen that before. The, um, the, my personal, the 1988 film is my favorite. It's um, a scenario where there is essentially like a giant chewing gum that that humanity has to fight and it absorbs people. And I feel like, like with sci-fi and horror, these, um, these like doomsday creatures embody our uncertainty for the future. And, um, and also like, like how we can't control everything. Um, so these movies like Alien, um, other creature features, whoop. My think like there. Oh, well, Little Shop of Horrors is like also my second favorite. Like the 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 sentient like plant. I like that is what is like so exciting to me. Like maybe the it's like very cathartic to see the world being taken over in a way so that people are no longer in control. Um, not saying that I want that to happen, but I, I, I find a lot of catharsis in those movies. Also, um, you can see in the, um, the hairy monsters in the previous slides were inspired by um, the red monster from uh, Bugs Bunny. I also really love, um, if, if anyone has seen uh, Monsters vs. Aliens, um, Seth Rogen is the blob. Um, so I pretty much like compile all of these different um, non-human forms in my mind um, and, and, and I collect them. I, I'm pretty much trying to 
just create something that cannot be categorized. Um, so I'm remixing different um, like limbs and and bodies. Um, there's a writer, um, uh, DJ Spooky, who wrote about the remix and how there's no originality. Um, I know that a lot of people that are tuning in are undergrads. And so I find that um, that a lot of things that he's written is really helpful for um, new newer artists. Um, so I, I tend to think of my own work as a Frankenstein monster. And I love to read a lot of analysis about how, how our minds react when we're confronted by something we cannot categorize. Um, I think it reframes our perspective and shows that our, our idea of control um, really isn't what we thought it was. Um, so I'm from rural North Carolina from the foothills. And since we're in Florida, not everybody may know what the foothills is. And that just means like settlers were like, oh, this is good. And they didn't, they didn't end up at the top of the mountain. They just kind of ended up in the middle. And that's the foothills. Um, there's a lot of people who, um, in, including my family, um, who are more likely to believe in, in Mothman, in um, aliens, in ghosts, and lizard people than um, they are to believe in the otherness that may exist uh, in their own family. So that, that means like neurodivergent, um, also sickness and um, often, um, so a lot of times like people who see these things are experiencing a hallucination, which is a, um, a symptom of, of something else. So it's a symptom of a trauma. And so that, uh, that hallucination is treated as the problem and not actually the cause. And I, I just think that's really interesting where people may believe more in, in a ghost than they will um, that maybe their um, partner is like has um, a mental health issue or um, a lot of times like, like rape survivors and things like that, um, like they're more likely to believe in an in a alien. Um, but it, it's, it's fun, it's interesting. I, I love that people are open to this type of otherness um, because I think that's an entryway into becoming um, open into our otherness. I like oh, that okay. analogy a lot about oh, <laughs> the analogy about um, the otherness and, and reality, how some people are more that they'll believe in an alien versus mental health and how you're trying to open that. Yeah, I'm not, I, I don't necessarily like believe that my work is doing that. Um, but I, I, that, that's the whole reason that I make this work. Um, I, I make, my work in mind for a lot of my family members who, um, because I want them to have a good experience with uncertainty so that in the future, they don't turn away from uncertainty or they don't react in fear. Um, so that like, like language is kind of strange. So uncertainty, we hear that a lot and um, so I, I almost wish this was like, uh, uh, like, like interactive um, so that we could hear from everyone what uncertainty meant to them. But um, sometimes that might just mean uh, interacting with different groups of people that you may never have interacted with, um, that we all share uncertainty for the future with the climate crisis. Um, but sometimes like people will tend to react in denial and, um, and to ignore. Um, I have a couple comments. Yeah. Um, so I had um, someone indicate there was another creation of, oh, the creation of supernatural creatures fascinate me. And then someone said there was also another show about monsters and aliens, just an interesting. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Add. Yeah, like I wonder if they're talking about. Um, there was this really great show that was canceled. I mean, I'm biased. Called uh, "The People of Earth," and it included um, 
like this, it was almost like a sitcom between all these different aliens and how they control the government. And it was really, really funny. And this like journalist who finds out about them, but no one believes him. Um, Interesting. So it's sort of like the matrix a little bit, right? Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like um, um, a, a quote or like someone that I think about a lot. This was written in the, the 70s um, about hallucinations. Um, and um, it's just the, the phenomenology of hallucinations that sickness estranges us from our body and then our body is turned into an object no longer to be trusted. Um, stricken with disease, we discover the power of otherness within ourselves. Um, so I think that that is a really great example of how we can be alienated from ourselves um, by just like the unexpected. Um, I usually include this in a lot of like writings to connect um, hallucinations, why I make the work I make um, to, to um, like actual studies. Um, this, uh, these are these are two. I think we we spoke about these books um, previously, but I I really love to listen to um, these turn of the century from like the late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds stories. They're usually written by men who um, are experiencing fear for maybe the first time uh, in nature and. But their first fear is that they're too afraid to share with the other people in their group. And that is a lot of times like what's catastrophic in the, um, the story because um, they're trying to like tough it out. Um, so like in horror movies, that would be like, um, like the group being like, oh, well, let's go check it out. Um, and, and you being like, don't do it, you're gonna die. Um, but the, these are two stories that I really, really love. Um, they are written by people who were afraid of other people of color, who were afraid, um, who were very sexist. And so a lot of their stories um, uh, include these terrible descriptions of people that kind of will remind you if you have a really insensitive aunt who wants to tell you like, the race and gender of their doctor, even though it doesn't pertain to the story. So that this is like a great example of that. Um, but I think it's almost useful because a lot of the, the characters that are um, like people of color or women um, usually don't experience the same horror that these um, like uh, normative men experience because they were too afraid, uh, afraid to share in their fear. Um, the, the color out of space, um, what I think influenced the story of uh, the, that was Annihilation, that movie that was written by uh, Jeff Vandermeer, uh, Area X. And, and it's a story of a slow, subtle, um, almost like alien invasion and, and in this story that was, that influenced that, sorry, um, it happens to a farmer and um, who is unwilling to move. And, um, and he has these amazing descriptions of the trees because all the, the life is affected by um, this like alien meteor. And, um, and it's so subtle that they're unable to, to see the, the, the subtle changes. And there's like one description of the trees moving when there's no wind. So if you imagine that, that would be so terrible and like thrilling, but the arms like are breaking and, and they're like moving. Um, so that, that, that's influenced my most recent work of these like tree figures. Um, a lot of times, like I like with both of these stories, the the subtleness of the the weird horror, I feel like is very similar to um, to to being in communities that um, may have uh, how do you say like um, um, generational trauma, like these habits that they're not even aware of. 
and you have to kind of leave and come back and be like, whoa, that was weird. Um, so I feel like they're very, it, it kind of shows what it's like to be in it and not be able to see the unhealthiness. Um, the Willows is a similar story by Algernon Blackwood. Um, I think it's like written in 1902 and it's like these two like explorers um, finding the Amazon. Um, and, and they're on this island and they realize that these trees are actually sentient and neither one wants to tell the other because they're afraid that they might be told that they're crazy. And it just, get, it just kind of devolves from there. I read the willow over the weekend after we mm -hmm. talked and I loved it. And I definitely see the, how it influences your work. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. I, I definitely feel like sometimes I'm um, better explaining my work than others. Um, um, mostly I'm, I'm, I'm always worried that maybe um, I'm just making this work in a, how do you, like in a, like a tunnel vision and um, it's not actually doing any of the things that I'm hoping it does. Um, but this is like an example of how I'm combining the costumes with the, um, with uh, the claymation. And um, I mostly am kind of a person that stays really busy um, and that's my comfort level. So a lot of previous projects included sound and claymation and projection um, that like, I would have puppets that interact with these certain claymation moments. And the, the, um, this sound was created by a friend of mine, um, Elise Anderson, who like is so like, if you ever find that person who you guys like think similarly and you almost like mind read, like you just get each other, like never lose that person. And um, she's that person for me. We have um, previous, uh, we, we come from uh, similar areas. So that makes it kind of easier. She, she picks up what I'm putting down, I guess. And then, so this is an, like how I projected the work onto a screen with puppet arms. And these um, white arms, I kind of use as a laugh track. So whenever something really exciting happened, I um, they would move up and down vigorously. And um, so I think that this is maybe like a 20 minute performance. And most of my performances include a lot of props. Um, so it takes, it's sometimes venues don't always understand that it's not just um, like me and some people. It, it, it takes like a, to set up the, the, it takes time to set up the projection, to include like the pulleys in the ceiling. And usually I'm just behind there um, doing everything. And I never want people to see me. I. Uh, my work isn't about anyone recognizing me ever. So great. It's almost like a theater set that you're creating. Awesome. That, yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely not a choreographer. I'm almost like a hammer with my work. I'm just like, um, I'm, I, I like to hire people who will move naturally. Um, so I, I play, I try to play up that awkwardness. Um, with this work, it's just like a lot of uh, images of, of different homes that have this like claymation um, that breaks through it. So it's kind of influenced by um, Amityville Horror, where like the house bleeds and it remembers like a previous trauma. Which I love that idea that um, a house remembers. But um, just so you get like a sense of the, the work I've made. Wonderful. 
And um, so this was like the first time I had like a larger budget from the Girls Club collection. And it's very much inspired by um, the, like the idea of a space invasion and something like taking over your body um, or, or replacing you entirely. Um, which was kind of like a horror genre, a sci-fi genre during like the Cold War, because um, there was like this like Soviet spy thing happening. I don't know why I did this. Um, I usually try to like include so much that like it's for someone who's similar to me who have problem take, uh, uh, paying attention. So it's almost like a punch of, uh, of different sensations. Like I, I like I like too much. I'm you're not a minimalist. No. <laughs> And, and this was the um, installation that you were referring to, um, the Young at Arts Museum that was in Davie, which they're no longer there since um, the pandemic. I heard um, about that recently, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, a, it, they're, they're still doing um, really cool activations at this mall, um, at Westfield Mall. And I know that, like we would all probably be like, ooh, a mall or, or maybe that's not really where you want your artwork, but they're impacting like a whole new audience um, of, of people who really may not feel that the museums are, are their spaces. And, um, and they're, they're impacting like the kids in, in really amazing ways because um, they include activities and they also allow artists to, um, to make to make whatever they really want to make. Like with this um, installation, originally I wanted to make um, a, an inflatable that the kids could bounce on. And um, the screen, the, um, these, these different characters, these three characters are talking to them. And um, this is supposed to be like a kind of sentient moss that's like growing like a transitional environment. And these uh, are disco ball motors. So they're like turning in the ceiling. Um, I don't know if you can see my arrow. Yes, we can. Oh, cool. Okay. So these are puppets that are in the ceiling and um, you can't see in this image, but there were, um, I'd made these um, pulleys. So the kids on that were over here when they first entered could pull the, um, the puppets in the ceiling. And if kids were in the back, they could not see how they were getting moved up and down, which created this like uncanny moment. Um, I mostly, I just really wanted them to be like, like totally, um, well, I know that word's overused, but immersed. Hello. Hi there, friend. I'm your friend. I'm real excited to see you. And, um, if you can almost hear it, but there's um, a soundscape of a cat purring. And I tried to make it so that the floor vibrated. So it felt like the whole thing was breathing. And um, inside this cave was a touch screen. So you could actually like interact with these characters that were inside this portal. That is so great. I wish I was able to experience it. It sounds really great. I, I, I'm biased. I was partial to it. <laughs> yeah. So this was at Young at Art? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and what was really interesting about this space was um, the curator, like once I submitted everything, he was like, okay, and what else? And what else? And normally a curator, or not always, but a venue will be like, we like this part. Um, can you do a little less? Um, the only thing was um, taking out more of the sinister dialogue. I really love double entendres and um, where like not only the form is um, kind of an embodiment of uncertainty, I also want the language to be uncertain 
where it could be interpreted both good and bad. So I, I, I love that, that gray area. Um, and so this space uh, did not, and, and so it had to be more positive for kids. And okay, so this was um, the piece for the Norton Museum of Art and it was called Soft Sanity. And um, it was just a one day installation, um, like three days before the new year of 2020. And I wanted to make this like participatory, um, like almost like a petting zoo where people could come in and experience different performances and literally like pet the work. Um, throughout the day. And I also gave them this map whenever they entered the room um, uh, that, that detailed all the little things in the room. And I would be like, here's your map, don't get lost. And um, it, was, it was pretty cute. And I made it modular because I had to, I tried to deinstall that same day. And I wanted it to be um, just like a look into the future where there was it, like the world wasn't for um, wasn't for people. Can you hear the sound? Yes. Oh, yeah. So um, this I this form is just like a cargo uh, or a car port like um, the ones that you can just buy off Amazon. And then I sewed uh, chiffon to grab the uh, projection. And I made these like pocket holes so that people could um, activate and interact with the projection. And in the back was actually a whole lounge area and then that, were, that was made off out of this like tufted material. And then I had uh, four performers in this bush handing out messages like, um, we grew when you weren't looking, um, we're new, uh, uh, one day you'll join us. And then this was the projection, um, which is just a claymation layered and um, each one was keyed out and replaced with the, uh, the, the textiles that were in the installation. Amazing. Yay, <laughs> that, that's a good reaction. That's, um, I think- I, I love the messages you write in your works. I was reading them earlier. Some of them are a little scary. Yeah, it kind of depends on um, who's reading them. Um, like this one kind of looks like Dean, but it's lean into me, I'll absorb you, rest into me, relax, I'll take care of everything, um, which might be really wonderful, but also disturbing. So I, yeah, I like that middle area. And this is um, the Fruiting Bodies, which is work that I've made it, since the pandemic. And um, I'm planning on installing them like a, a um, alien like forest. And I've just, I've just, that's like all I've been making, which is um, way different than previous projects that were created because an institution messaged me. Um, so they were made like site specific. Sorry if I'm waving, I'm always facing outside my studio. I don't know if you can see. So I, I always wave at everybody. Um, but uh, so yeah, this is the first work that I really relaxed and I'm making for myself um, that doesn't, that isn't going to live somewhere specifically. Um, I don't think I would have made it without Ulai or without the pandemic even, which is pretty strange. Um, I had a comment about the, the writing, the text. Give me one sec. Um, the messages make your, you look at the work in a different light. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm mostly interested in that kind of um, intimate interaction, um, not sexual, just just personal. Um, and and sometimes it doesn't always matter to me what it says. Um, I mostly just want that slightly uncanny thing of of li un lifting a flap which is simple technology because I, I did want to include sensors where I actually spoke to you. And I was, I'm always like, oh, I can make this cheaper. So I just sewed it. And um, so if, if it just, you, you lift the flap and it acknowledges you, um, like I, like one of them is like, I love to feel your touch. I want that to be like, like um, both, like sweet and kind of um, terrifying. I'm not saying that my work does that, but I, I wish it did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is uh, this is more of the fruiting bodies on this side, and this was a piece that I would I began tufting right before the pandemic, and then um, which is a. You're, it's a car, it's a way of making carpets. It's become like super popular uh, with TikTok since the pandemic um, because the equipment's gotten a lot cheaper. But um, so I included um, these quilted pieces throughout it, and this is like the one figure that actually I'm totally ripping off a movie called The Ritual, um, which I think is on Netflix. If anyone wants to watch that. It's um, like a forest creature that um, terrorizes a group of men. And I guess I just really love that. Like that's just a theme. Those are stories I love. Of, uh, I'm sorry, like of men, men getting, getting terrorized in the woods by like a I was gonna say, I see a common theme here with the, yeah. the stories that you like. Yeah, because I, I, I'm not saying that it has to be a man, but I feel like often Unfortunately, men feel like they have to be even more tough and less uh, vulnerable. And um, I think I love those stories because um, it takes this whole like, like unthinkable creature to make them share their, their fear. And, and I want, I, I just like a lot of times, like I said previously, I'm making work for my family. Um, with them in mind. And I just like really want them to be comfortable with sharing their fear <laughs> and, and their uncertainty and, and not be so alone in, in their fear and make choices because of that. Um, so I, I, I hope that makes sense, but, uh, but it doesn't necessarily <laughs> always have to. No, it does make sense, definitely. This is an example of some of the messages inside. And um, this is just an example of some of the work. Oh, this is actually behind me um, where I dyed it. Um, so I quilted the fabric, which um, you can see here. Um, so it's just quilted on white fabric and um, using different thread on the back and the front. And then I'll dye um, the pieces together so that they um, match. So I'm making a group of these. And um, oh, and this is a project that um, I'm going to be working with a friend of mine named Taina Dareville. And she is um, really interesting. Um, she she's a curator she's an art admin but um, her degrees are in mental health uh, and in counseling counseling and um, I probably said that wrong but um, so I want to make this game where you actually date my work and you have you're navigating through a forest but you're also navigating how to um, to your terrain of manipulative language by dating these characters that are not so healthy because they're doomsday monsters. <laughs> but um, so I just made this uh, example for some different um, to explain better what this project would be. And um, it's pretty much like um, 
a choose your own adventure game. <laughs> and it's just like, uh, you can choose like by your choices that choose it, that, um, that decides the, the narrative of the story. And um, you can name your characters. Um, gate, uh, these like dating simulators have gotten really popular during the pandemic, uh, which is, there are some really cute ones. Um, I didn't bring in, I didn't include any examples, but uh, I wonder if anybody plays them that's in the, the, the audience. Um, so yeah, this kind of gets more into the questions that you said that you might um, ask me for um, the students. Um, this, you know, what, who are you, like what movements or um, artists influence your work? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is uh, Nikki DeSaint. This is the uh, Firebird. I think it might have like a longer name. But um, so I went to undergrad in Charlotte, um, North Carolina, and there's this amazing um, museum, the Beckler Museum, which is really similar to like the Dela Cruz family, the Margulies family, um, all the families down here that collect art. Um, so the Beckler family collected a lot of French artists and um, they were building uh, this museum and included um, Nikki Saint's piece, um, I think my first year in undergrad. And I was, I, I never knew that public art could be this crazy. And I, I love weird and crazy. I'm like, yeah, let's get weird. Um, Cause a lot of the other pieces are more serious and um, like serious looking corporate um, public art. And so this work, her work really like blew my mind and I've always wanted to go to, there's a kind of like amusement park of all her work um, in this small town in France. And um, it's, it's, I think it's wonderful. I love her work too. I heard just an FYI, I heard that there, her work might be coming to the United States for a exhibition. I, wow. I wonder, like, yeah. I wonder how they would do that. Like if that's just a, a cargo ship. <laughs> I'm not, I, I remember reading and thinking, oh my God, that's going to be wonderful. So I'll have to, if I find out, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah. Her work's amazing. This is a funny photo that um, I took because another question uh, you were mentioning that you might ask is um, the about the pandemic and how it changed and influenced my work. And this is my apartment with my family. And this is like full quarantine. And um, I posed for this, uh, this, this photo because I thought it was so funny. Like I was really into these slippers at the time. I like those slippers. Right, right. They like dust while you walk around. It's <laughs> amazing. Um, and, and so this is my daughter and this is my husband. And they didn't know I, I like posed for this photo. And like, like I like arranged the dog toy and this is my dog Opal. And um, this is really, I was, I, I don't know how to like really describe like how Paramount, like, like the, the pandemic was because of being restricted and like really needing to make work. Um, me as an artist, I, I, I make work compulsively. I, I am a workaholic and, and that's really where I'm most comfortable, like less comfortable talking about it. But, um, but I, I like to just keep my head down and, and make work. I, I'm a fidgety person. And, um, I was getting on my family's nerves and my husband was just like, could you just like do something? Could you just like like I, I have a little sister energy of uh, just always being, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I like almost innately am like annoying. Um, <laughs> I don't I, think I, that's true. I know what I am, but um, um, so this was, this was like the pandemic for us. So when, so during the pandemic, you were making art, can you talk a little bit? Cause I remember we discussed, you said um, something about having those, um, boundaries or, or not having the boundaries freed you a little bit. 
Yeah, I, um, I pr previously to Ulai, um, I've had much larger spaces, um, which isn't always the best thing because I do tend to make like really big things um, like the dome for the, the um, or like even this work, like I could totally set up all this work in my previous studio and um, with, you can barely see it with this like furniture pieces in the back. And I have some, I have like one in here. Um, and like, like this piece, but um, bigger, bigger isn't always better. Um, um, I feel like the pandemic kind of allowed me to calm down and because, um, because I don't have any boundaries and I was having a lot, I've always had a lot a, like hard time saying no to things. Um, no one was emailing me to be in shows or do things. And I had time, I had, I had a lot of time to make work just for myself that made me happy. And um, what's really been strange and wonderful is, is this is the work that I've, I've sold the most to people. Um, I, 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 enjoy, I had a really lovely time in the early part of the pandemic melling packages. I, I really, apparently I really love to mail things. <laughs> Amazing what we learned about ourselves during the yeah. pandemic, right? Yeah, it seems, it seems like so long ago, um, but um, yeah, it kind of, it, it like forced me to, to completely change how I was making and um, previously, uh, at, right after grad school, I've just overlapped deadlines. So I had no downtime, which is comfortable for, for me because I, I don't have to think about anything. I don't have to think about um, like any family drama. I'm too busy, like whoops. <laughs> um, um, so I, yeah, it, it it's, been good for me. It's like being out in open water. Nice. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you, you know, you, you made that quote from, um, DJ Spooky. Spooky. DJ Spooky. I forget his. DJ uh, Spooky about remix and no originality. I think your work is really original. So, and I do think sometimes I'm like, I always think how artists like you come up with all these new ideas. I'm always amazed how people like you do that. You know, how is your mind work? And I'm, I'm we're installing an, an installation right here in the gallery and I'm looking at this artwork. It's so original. I'm like, how do people come up with this? Cause I always think everything's been done, but it's not. Well, I, I think about like, um, cause so DJ Spooky talks about how everything's a remix and, and in the way of like sampling music. So he would be like um, sampling like so much music to make something that is almost new, but really it's just like a new association. It's like a Frankenstein monster. So um, Frankenstein monster, um, has like a limb from uh, your neighbor Joe and and uh, another limb from, you know, like I don't know somebody else and 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 so he's just like this uh, a culmination of of all these people. Um, he's not new. He's just like a new um, a new like a, a remix. <laughs> yeah, but I I I think about everything as a blender um, because a lot of my work. Um, has been so influenced by childhood hallucinations, which is really just a blender, um, which I think is just so interesting how um, children, uh, um, how, how, they, how they innately um, go like uh, resolve trauma by having these hallucinations, which sometimes is a trauma in itself, but, um, I'm always like, what if the uncanny actually has a purpose? Um, anyway, that that's a weird thought that I'm still like figuring out that. 
But um, but so I think of the mind as a as a as a blender, and that I'm just putting in all these like the movie, the blob, the movie, the alien, um, this story about these men being harassed in the woods by uh, ancient creature. You know that goes in the blender. Um, like how I'm actually really afraid of crabs that goes in the blender. Um, but I still want people to have a good experience with the work. So I choose um, friend, I, I call it friendly aesthetics. Um, I use a lot of colors from like children's educational television, which um, is just like a long explanation of like Sesame Street and Yo Gabba Gabba. Um, and, and I use texture because I want, I, I feel like texture, especially um, fiber, because I'm fiber partial, is evens the playing ground for everyone um, because you can have like a body reaction to the work. I, I mostly, I just don't want anyone to look at a piece and be like, I don't understand that. I have no place here. I, I really want this to be very approachable work. Yeah. I think you succeeded. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I, I think you did. Yeah, I, I've been told I say yay too much. So I'm really working on not being like, yay. I I taught at a daycare. And I think since then, I just, I'm always like, yay. <laughs> um, so I wonder on this recording, the playback, if there can be like um, a game to see how many times I say um and yay. That's funny. You're funny. Thank you a lot. <laughs> That's funny. Well, do you want to... Um just talk about a little bit about, I know we had talked before and we had a really good time about branding about as an artist. Like I, I had mentioned, um, some artists like to think of it as painters or they want to be, you know, known as uh, a sculptor, but you, and you're like, no, I like, you don't want to be put in a box. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Like I, both of my degrees are in uh, sculpture. And um, I used to be very, I used, I, I used to always be like public sculpture. That's the best medium in the world because it's outside and, and, and it's for people. And then, um, and then I got really into video because I'm like, you can't, you don't have to store the video. I'm like, video is the best. You can put everything in a video. You can, you can film your friends. You can um, film costumes. You can include claymation, like, it's almost um, like a bag. You can just put everything in there and um, like sound and yeah. And, um, and now I'm totally like, I, I love fiber. Um, it's really whatever, whatever means to an end. I, I mostly, I make work because I want people to have a good experience with it. I, I make work for, um, for people who who maybe this is their first experience with artwork that that that's that's like foremost and and maybe because I think of those things uh, maybe that is a brand but um I used to be really concerned about consistency and I think what's most important um for all the students um is whenever you leave and I'm sure people tell you this all the time um whenever you leave school, you're going to feel alone and you need to build up your network. You need to keep your friends and don't talk crap about each other because that's your network um, and, and share with each other. Because I used to be so insecure about consistency because it is really weird because I made these monsters that went on the side of the road and now I'm making quilting work and like on paper that doesn't always track, but you like with like the idea of brandy I'm like don't worry about it so much like just try to be happy <laughs> like I feel like you'll just drive yourself crazy thinking about branding I think yeah. that's a really nice way to end our conversation with um to the students and that's good advice um did you want to share anything else I mean we're, um, we have a few more minutes like oh you have some upcoming exhibitions Oh yeah. Um, well, just things happening this week. Um, let me find the end of this. But um, there is on Wednesday. There is at Ulight, um, which is on Lincoln Road. 
um, you all should come out. There's a, a show opening upstairs and there is a show downstairs um, that you can see. And I think most of the residents will have their studios open. So you can see a lot of different practices. And um, so, so I would come to that, that's Wednesday, seven to nine. And then the very next day is a reception way up in Coral Springs. Um, it's a, uh, a show based around uh, artists who have made these art books. And fortunately I've been one um, through the IS Projects uh, program. And um, IS Projects is, is also like a really amazing institution, or I think it's kind of becoming an institution. And um, they, they do an artist book uh, twice a year and they work with artists who don't necessarily work with paper. So they've been really amazing for me because paper was always really scary to me because I'm not a careful person. Um, I'm like the person that turned in homework with like uh, stains on it. Yeah, but um, so this this work is shows the artist book work and and then shows an actual like full installation from um, works that inspired the books and other like pieces that were made after the books. Um, there's one uh, installation by Brian Butler that is it's it's really good. It's very worth going and checking out. Um, no. So, well, yeah. thank you, Jen. That yeah. was so great. I love meeting <laughs> you um, and learning more about your work. It's fascinating. So thank you so much for agreeing to participate. And thank all of you for joining us today. I just want to um, let you know we're not going to be back for a while. We're taking a little time off and we're going to be back for um, the uh, fall semester. So we'll keep in touch then, but please go out and see uh, the exhibitions. I look forward to seeing both. So hopefully I can make it to both. So thank you again, everybody have a great, great week. And thank you, Jen. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye everybody.